Hello, welcome to the build guide for the AI Synthesis Wall Warp Power Supply. This is an easy to build solution that will provide plus minus 12 volts to your Eurorack system or other synthesizer. It also has all of the jacks on board so you don't have to mess with wiring or worry about a jack coming loose uh, if you're gigging, which is the main reason I built these and then uh, people wanted them. So I decided to make a small run of them. They're available from AISynthesis.com in both PCB and kit format. I'm going to build as if it is a bench power supply uh, for a Eurorack system. So I'm just putting in a 10 pin connector in the Eurorack slot. However, the MTA 4 pin, the Eurorack connector, and the wire pads are all connected. So you can use all or neither of them to deliver positive and negative 12 volt power rails. Now we're going to add the two 2.4K resistors. These are in the circuit in order to put a small load on the circuit and allow you to test it without a module hooked up. Now we're going to add the 1N4004 diodes. These are here to split the AC power coming in, which is bipolar, into two separate unipolar powers. Uh, so you're going to, the AC comes in, hits the first two diodes, and then from there you have a positive 12 volts and a negative 12 volts. You technically only need two, uh, but we have six here in order to comply with US safety uh, guidelines.
Now we're going to add the LM7912 and LM7812 regulators. It is critically important that you do not get these mixed up. If you do, your circuit will explode. Uh, probably just the caps, but either way, we don't want that. So pay special attention, then just put them in there, line them up, and solder them in. So these are the regulators. So the power is coming in from the wall wart, and it's going to be a little bit unstable. It's going to be plus minus more than what it should be. What these regulators do with the 12 on the uh, end of both them, 7912 and 7812, is to take voltage coming in and make sure that it's outputting at around 12 volts. If you needed a uh, 9 volt supply, you would do a 7809, etc. At this time, it's good to do the AC input jack. Gravity will just hold it in there before we add any parts that are taller. Uh, so you can just click it in there and let it sit there. You want to go a little quick when you solder this one, uh, just because it is a plastic part uh, that is that then has metal inside of it. So if it gets too hot, it will get a little soft, which we don't want. Uh, but if, as long as you're just soldering normally, uh, you should have no issues getting uh, enough solder in there on all the pads. At this point, we're going to add the 1UF tantalum capacitors. These are polarized, so you will need to pay attention to the way that they are polarized. They have a little mark on the cap. Uh, if you follow along with the build pictures on the website at aisynthesis.com build, you can double check your wiring, uh, but it's not too hard to get them in there. Uh, these, again, are, they're, are mostly here for uh, safety and not an incredibly critical part of the circuit.
Now we're going to add the big capacitors. Uh, so you can see that the power comes into the AC jack and then it hits the two uh, diodes and those split it. So if you picture a sine wave, you've got a sine wave and now they hit the diode. So you've got two separate paths. One is just positive humps and one is just kind of negative humps from the two halves of the sine wave, uh, the bipolar sine wave. Uh, and then the each of those humps, if you will, uh, goes through a series of caps, uh, both to provide uh, stability and create one line of power before it hits the regulators, uh, and also uh, just for safety. Everything looks good, and we're almost ready to test. Before you test, make sure you make a clean working surface. You do not want the bottom of the circuit uh, to get bridged, any parts to get uh, bridged by a clipping that you had uh, left around, because that'll make things explode. Uh, so when you're ready to test, grab your safety goggles and your multimeter and your AC output while work. Very important that it's AC output, not DC output. And it can be anywhere from 12 to 16 volts for this circuit without causing any problems. You don't really want to go too much over that. So I got my safety goggles on, plug it in, and I just wait. I don't do anything. I just make sure that it doesn't explode. Uh, if it is going to explode, it will do so fairly quickly. So now I'm ready to test, just see what's going on. I'm using the wire pads for that, I've got 12 point. 12, 13 volts, that's great. And then negative 11.8 volts, that's just fine. Models won't worry about that at all. So that's looking good. Now I'm just gonna let it burn in and chill out for a little bit. 
make sure nothing bad happens. And uh, after 20 minutes, half an hour or so, it'll be ready to test my system. Thanks for watching.